This was brought to you by The Storyteller on YouTube and Facebook. It is said on good authority that he was the most powerful of all the Earls of Orkney. Earl Rognvalder's grand journey to Norway, Galicia, Gibraltar and Byzantium and back to Norway, Svein arrives in Dublin where he is quickly tricked into falling in a pit and is killed. But people say that apart from those of higher rank than himself, he was the greatest man the Western world has ever seen. Magnus had a skiff hauled across the narrow neck of land at Tarbert, with himself sitting at the helm, and this is how he won the whole peninsula. Gintyre is thought to be more valuable than the best of the Hebridean islands, though not as good as the Isle of Man. It juts out from the west of Scotland, and the isthmus connecting it to the mainland is so narrow that ships are regularly hauled across it. After ruling Norway for nine years, King Magnus sailed west over the sea to plunder in Ireland. He spent the winter in Connaught, and was killed the following summer in Ulster, on street. Bartholomew's Day, August 24. Now however, there was some rest to the men of Erin for a period of forty years, without ravage of the foreigners, after this came the prodigious royal fleet of the children of Imar to Athcliath, Dublin, and the greater part of Erin was plundered by them. Ord Mocha also was pillaged by them, but according to some people, the story was a lot uglier. The whole of Mumhain became filled with immense floods and countless sea vomitings of ships and boats and fleets, so that there was not a harbour, or a landing port, nor a dun, nor a fortress, in all Mumhain without fleets of Danes and pirates. Shouting, hateful, powerful, wrestling, valiant, active, fierce-moving, dangerous, nimble, violent, furious, unscrupulous, untamable, inexorable, unsteady, cruel, barbarous, frightful, sharp, ready, huge, prepared, cunning, warlike, poisonous, murderous hostile Danners, bold, hard-hearted Danmarkians, surly, piratical foreigners, blue-green, pagan, without reverence, without veneration, without honor, without mercy, for God or for men. In the morning, Sven and his men got up, armed themselves, and walked to town as far as the gate. The Dubliners formed a crowd so that the way to the pits was clear, and Sven and his men, suspecting nothing, fell right into them. The men of Leinster would not have revolted from Brian's rule, were they not nagged into irresponsible fury by a woman's tongue. It appears to me, said she, that the foreigners have gained their inheritance. What meanest thou, O woman, said M. Labour's son? The foreigners are going into the sea, their natural inheritance, said she, I wonder if it is heat that is upon them, but they tarry not to be milked, if it is. The son of Amlaib became angered and gave her a blow. It's clever of him to look for our support when we have so many powerful friends and marriage connections. Now that I've married off Margaret Haken's daughter to Earl Madder of Athol, we've many a good claim to Orkney, for he's the best born of all the chieftains of Scotland his father Malmari being brother of Malcolm King of Scots, father of David the present king. I'm not without influence myself, and people think me pretty shrewd, so it's unlikely that I'll be fooled by whatever might happen in this conflict, as long as they are alive they'll always cause trouble. But when the foreigners saw the conflagration in Fine Gaul, and the district of Eda, they came against them in Marf and Elder. And they met, and raised their standards of battle. Brian pauses in his prayer a first time to ask about the banner, and when he hears that it is still standing, and with it many others belonging to the Dal case, he states happily that is good news indeed and returns to his prayers. A little later, he again asks for an update on the battle, inquiring about the status of his son's banner in particular. On hearing that the standard has moved westward, but is still aloft, Brian states, the men of Erin shall be well while that standard remains standing, because their courage and valor shall remain in them all, as long as they can see that standard. Another fifty psalms, fifty prayers, and fifty pater nosters later, Brian inquires once more. The attendant describes the chaos of the battle, noting that the foreigners have been defeated, but that the standard of Merchard has fallen. That is sad news, said Brian, on my word, said he, the honor and valor of Erin fell, when that standard fell, 
and Erin has fallen now indeed, and never shall there appear henceforth a champion comparable to or like to that champion. Brian now reveals that he had had a premonitory dream the night before in which Apel of Craigliath, the, the Banshee of the House of Munster, had appeared to him, and told him that the first of his sons that he saw today would succeed him as king. With Merchard dead, Brian now confers his throne upon Donchard, sending the attendant away to convey the news. He dies himself soon after. Now, take this banner. I have made it for you with all the skill I have, and my belief is this, that it will bring victory to the man it's carried before, but death to the one who carries it. Sigur has a series of military successes as a result of this magical device, but gradually his men seem to learn of its effect upon its carrier and begin to avoid it. In the midst of the Battle of Clontarf, no one would carry the Raven Banner, so the Earl had to do it himself. Sigur at last seizes the banner himself, and stuffs it under his tunic, receiving a mortal blow soon after. This was brought to you by The Storyteller on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Anchor. Breaker. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public, Spotify, support us on Patreon, and check us out on Discord. All the links can be found in the video description below. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.